Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the warm up, the Euro 2020 warm up uh, here on Optus Sport. Where we've been taking you through this incredible competition. I don't even know what to call it, Claude. I'm going to bring <laughs> you in early because what a morning we had. We are going to reflect on that in just a moment. Yeah. Have you had any sleep? Oh, barely, but I don't even mind. I'm not mad because what a morning it was. We had so many goals. There's no way you could have predicted that. I came close to predicting yesterday, but there's no way you could have predicted those results. It was incredible. And guys, as always, we're live on all socials as well, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. So get involved. I've got a poll running at the moment because there's a few big games coming up tonight. And yep. one of them involves England. We're going to get to that in a second. But I've got a poll going on at the moment, which is, should Gareth Southgate bring back the waistcoat, the famous waistcoat from the 2018 World Cup? Mel McLaughlin has brought it back. Well, I just thought, well, you know, when you were, you know, it was a tribute to Roberto Mancini. Yes, Mancini. The man key. Well, I wasn't talking, I'm talking yeah, about the blazer. Yeah, the blazer, yes. But the waistcoat, there is a bit of talk. We know with the World Cup um, in 2018, it took the world by storm, didn't mm. it? No, it did, it did. And, and this is from England? Officially, Marks and Spencers. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, maybe a bit of luck, maybe a bit of inspiration, I don't know. But there are two enormous matches Massive. coming your way tonight. We are going to reflect on a ridiculous morning, but England v Germany is the early game. That one coming up, the coverage from 1.30am Eastern, and that takes you into Sweden up against Ukraine. Yes, there are two games <laughs> going on tonight. You'd be forgiven with respect for forgetting, but we are going to obviously acknowledge everything. But this morning, Claude, yeah. it's perhaps maybe the greatest, if not at least one of the greatest, greatest days in, in football that we've seen. Yeah. Uh, no one saw that coming. A million no. goals, was it? Yeah, I know. Close to that. I heard a crazy fact as well that said that in a Euros knockout match, no team had ever come back from a two-goal deficit in the final 10 minutes. It happened twice this morning. Ridiculous. The first one, probably the biggest one, we've got to talk about France against Switzerland. Yeah. Me <sighs> Where do we even start? Yeah, the world champions, they are out, yes. which is the biggest, well, you're not shocked. A lot of people will say they're not shocked, but it is an enormous shock. When you have a team of that quality, they absolutely fail. But in terms of the encounter, um, you've got to give credit to the opposition. But we'll, yeah. there, there are so many highlights. So many highlights. And Paul Pogba, look, once again, love him or hate him, he really did dominate the midfield, scored an incredible goal early on, celebrated like a Fruit Loop. And I didn't rate got, that celebration. He's got one sleeve up, one sleeve down. Looks like prime car. Melo Anthony there, but the game rolled on. The Swiss got back into it, scored two late goals. Granit Xhaka was the man of the match. He was brilliant. Really Led by example, didn't he? Led by example. Here he is here. I think this was before extra time or before the penalties, just giving his team talk to everyone, rolling them up, and then it went to penalties, which is always a cruel way to settle a match, but Kylian Mbappe took the vital penalty. Well, it's one of those, of course he did. It's one of those absolute horror shows. There's already so many talk about him. Why hasn't he found the back of the net so far? And, it, you know, it all falls to him at that point. And, of course, a lot of the French fans are absolutely blowing up Didier Deschamps. He's done something different, something he rarely does in terms of the formation and what he did in, in, in the back line as well. Yeah. I don't need to go there. I've heard a few scarred French fans already just blowing up and going through everything. But regardless, credit to Switzerland. It was yeah. just a sensational war war morning. Yeah. And as a result, they... Sorry, I haven't slept. No, that's fair enough. That's they, fair enough. What is yeah. sleep? So they yeah, they move on and they are going to face Spain. Mm. Credit to Croatia though. If we want to talk about character and yeah. absolute battles here, yeah. Yeah. this one was another yo-yo affair. But I've got to say, late on in that match, he, we can see the Croatian fans. They absolutely willed them on. It was the most amazing atmosphere I think we've heard so far this tournament. It's been a long time since we've heard that kind of noise in football. Yeah, it was incredible. 85th minute, the score was still 3-1 to Spain. They scored two late goals and, and you thought of that moment that they could dream. If, if Ivan Perisic was playing, who knows how the result would have gone. But Alvaro Morata scored his goal and silenced the critics. So there's a nice story there too and Spain are through to the next round. And that's uh, in, despite the fact that Spain's manager. Mm. Do, can we can we talk about the genes? There was some Enrique. Can I like we, it. We, do you really? Mm. It's very playing at Enrique on one of the Iglesias. biggest stages, well, the second biggest world stage, you could say. Yeah. What's he doing in genes? And and you lifting it. Obviously, he's done something right there because they yeah. did a job. But I'm not okay with it. Come on, it's like prime Antonio Banderas, no? No. No. Okay. What I don't are you mind doing? It. I don't mind it. On the sideline <laughs> at the Euros. <laughs> Maybe this is um, yeah my my blow up to have on my own. The <laughs> now, fashion police. Over we, here. Yeah, yeah. Who am I? What am I talking? I'm in an oversized waistcoat. Knockout tree. Yes. This is my favourite part. There. That's right. We're almost there. Almost time for the quarterfinals. Look at that. No one would have predicted that. Spain, who haven't been super convincing, now find themselves against Switzerland in the quarterfinal. That's going to be a very interesting game because, honestly, if you're Switzerland, after knocking out the world champions, you fancy yourself against the Spanish side, which has looked quite shaky. Yeah, it's certainly not fully convincing just yet. Um, in terms of England-Germany, though, we're mm. talking about who's going to advance. Uh, we already know. The reason being, mm -hmm. there's an elephant 
oh, in yes. Hamburg Zoo in Germany. Who has a one? She has a 100% record in picking the German results to date. Yashoda, mm. an oracle if you like, a psychic, and here she is predicting this one. And oh, Germany is going to win. There's and, the flag. Yeah, this guy just to prove that there were two flags in there. He goes in and he grabs out the English flag. Yashoda, incredible story. We all remember Paul the octopus, yes. right? This is brilliant because we Yashoda not only picked the French in the first game, picked Germany against Portugal, but in their draw against Hungary, Yashoda pulled out both flags. So she is spot on. She hasn't missed so far. No, she hasn't. And with that in mind, it's time for Euro to the Max. Let's go to Lars and Max. Uh, Max Russian, good evening to you. Um, I'm sorry, but Yashoda's spoken. Oh. It's apparently all over. I mean, in many ways, actually, if, if Germany are going to play an elephant at centre-back, then it does make sense for Gareth Southgate <laughs> to pick Bukayo Saka and Raheem Sterling wide because the turning circle of an elephant is slow and that, that could help us getting in behind. Welcome to Wembley Way. Uh, we're at the Box Park in Wembley. Uh, just on the other side of the camera, there are lots of England fans who have been drunk from 10 a.m. Now singing Unbelievable by EMF. Before that, we had Sweet Caroline, Roxanne. Uh, it, Three Lions is about to happen, I'm sure, at any time. Maybe while we're on air, Lars Sivertson. Um, I... I'm, I'm terrified yes. because I care. And I feel like I've been here before. And I know people keep saying history is history, but it's definitely happened. I've seen it with my eyes. And I need somebody who is dispassionate to tell me how England win this game today. Well, firstly, on behalf of all foreigners, we do find it very funny when England <laughs> fail. But I have to say, over the years, I've come to regard you as a person who I don't dislike. Thank you. <laughs> and thinking of how happy it would make you, it does make me think, yeah, OK, if England win, maybe it's OK. Um, I think they have a real chance. You know, I, I texted you during Germany, Hungary, and said I'm getting a creeping suspicion that you might do this. Just because Germany are not in a good state. They're a bit of a rebel at the moment which feels like I'm tempting fate saying that. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. I don't no. want to hear positive or negative. I don't want to hear anything, really, which is an issue. I should just for leave. Should I just go inside <laughs> and sing Sweet Caroline for a few hours? For, a, then, for yeah. a broadcast, it's a tricky. So England might go to a three. Yes. France went to a three. That didn't work. Why would it work today? So, so those are the news we've woken up to. They're reporting that England will revert to a back three. Bukayo Saka might start. I think that's uh, Gareth Southgate trying to avoid uh, what happening, happened to Portugal against Germany happening to him, which is Portugal played quite a narrow back four and, and Germany with their wing backs, you know, put them right high and right wide and just moved the ball very quickly from side to side, which the Portuguese never really came to grips with and they kept putting in dangerous crosses and it was all really bad. Whereas Hungary, on the other hand, played a back three, matched them up in that regard and you saw Germany struggle to find space much more. So you'll see that this, okay, you can say slightly conservative and it's Southgate being worried about Germany's strengths but I think it makes sense. And I think if you look at this German team where they're weak, I think they're worried about hap what happens behind their wing backs. The, the, the wide center halves aren't that fast. So there's space there to be attacked and having Sterling and Saka either side to try to hit those spaces. I think it kind of makes sense. So that would be no Grealish, no Foden, no Mount. I mean, whatever, it was always going to happen that it's Southgate has decision. to miss out big it's a, players. If it's true, if this is what happens, it's a huge decision by Southgate. And again, for a man who gets slated for being conservative a lot, you know, we've spent a weeks now talking about, you know, Will Grealish or, or Sancho or Foden. Like, oh, yeah. No, actually, he's going to go with Saka, apparently. Uh, partially because he played really well against the Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a really brave decision if that was, that's what ends up happening. Um, we are contractually obliged to mention that Sweden nil, yes. Ukraine nil is happening after England nil, Germany nil. Uh, you are a Nordic yes. man. Tell us about it. Should I, should I maybe, uh, could, could I maybe do it like a Scandinavian? That would change like my last. accent. And yes, hello <laughs> here from, I am on holiday at Wembley. No, um, I think Sweden are actually quite fun because they are pretty solid. And we saw the game against Spain where they went into the sort of turtle formation all that. They do have young Alexander Isak up front who's having a bit of a breakthrough tournament. We've seen him play well in La Liga, but he's just really taken over now. And I was intrigued to see Dejan Kulusevski of mm. Juventus come on against uh, Poland and looked really, really strong. So he missed the first couple of games with COVID, but he's someone who just adds, runs with the ball, you know, fast, exciting guy who can do some things. Really hoping he starts for Sweden, that Jan Andersson finds a way to bring him in. So if you have a really solid team with them too, and also Emil Forsberg, who's been on good form, it's pretty good, Sweden are not bad. In a word, and I mean a word, is it coming home? It kind of, I, I've changed my mind. I in think a word. I, I'm, maybe. Maybe, I'll take maybe. Yeah, that's um, well better than the last time, Max. Uh, before I let you go, now what we have in the spirit of England playing, 
You yeah. know, obviously you would be familiar with the Lion bars, the chocolate bars. There's three of them here, which a lot of people are... It's maybe the cheaper version instead right. of getting a jersey. Uh, Claude's here, hasn't tried one yet. He is of Italian right. descent. I am going to make him try it a little <laughs> bit later. Can you just describe a Lion bar for okay. those who don't know? Oh, a Lion bar is a, is a sort of... It's a wholesome and sturdy chocolate bar. It wouldn't be a light bite. It would really sustain you for a good couple of hours between lunch and dinner. Wafer, uh, uh, sort of cobbled chocolate with, I think, some kind of nut on the top. So if he has any allergies, do read the label. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Max and Lars, and uh, good luck. Just right. deep breaths. You're going to be OK. That's a very good description. You're yeah. going to do it now? Yeah, it just looks like a, a poor man's picnic. A poor man's picnic? That's cold. Mmm. That's quite good. I know it's quite I can't good. complain. A poor man. So you're going to get a bit of no, hate mail over that's that good. One, I reckon. Don't do hate mail. We don't like that. It's not cool. <laughs> um, England, Germany, let's get back to that while you munch on the line bar. Head to head, it mm. doesn't really look good if you're England recently. No. Sorry, I'm finishing. I, I, I could just talk through it. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Now, we'll jump in here and say, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. And history suggests, especially at major tournaments, that the English should be worried tonight. I think the, the biggest one is 25 years, almost to the day, that the Germans knocked England out of their own home Euro at Wembley. Gareth Southgate missed the vital penalty that day. And for those more recent historians, 2010 wasn't cruel, uh, wasn't a good year for them either. Germany beat them 4-1 at the World Cup. Lampard's famous ghost goal, which wasn't given. So. You know what? I was at that game and I took a photo of yeah. the ball going. I, I, I promise you. What? You I took did. a photo at the moment I, that the I, ball I, I, the line. Well, I took a lot of photos. And yeah. then later I went, oh my God, I got it. You had the proof that was, we all needed. It was, um, <laughs> it was it was tough to watch, put yeah. it that way. Plenty of loud, um, red-faced Englishmen that had a few to drink that weren't too happy as well. But that's yep. just not the point. Let's talk about Gareth Southgate, who, yes, is part of the history and perhaps the English scars but here he is talking about how young his team is and what history should and shouldn't mean to them. Most weren't born when a lot of those games happened um, it's, a, it's an irrelevance for them so I think uh, we're all looking forward to the game tomorrow we know it's a fantastic game to be involved in um, and a real opportunity for us to to progress to a quarter final. And he's probably got a point yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, very young games. players, some of them. Yeah, they are very young players, but everyone grew up with the stories. I'm sure their dads, their family members all told them the stories of Germany. So I don't really buy into that. I think there's a lot on the line tonight. History is so important. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. For now, though, Dave Davutovich out and about. Is that, we're going to talk a bit of German culture, German food. Dave, guten Tag. Guten Tag, Mel and Claude. We're at the Hof downtown in Melbourne, Docklands, where the Germans are preparing for tonight's epic clash against England. Let's take a look. Well, welcome to the Hof downtown in Docklands. Um, uh, we are here just in front of the kitchen and I'm going to quickly take you into the kitchen, show you what we're going to serve tonight or tomorrow morning, together with a beer, a nice Bavarian breakfast sausage and some breakfast. Come with me. All right, so here we got our traditional Bavarian breakfast sausage. It's called Weisswurst. They are traditionally served with a freshly baked pretzel with sweet mustard, a little bit of butter and a Weiss beer. And I'm going to show you how to brew a Weiss beer now. All right, so we've got a Weisswurst already. And the best thing to have with the Weisswurst, or actually the only thing allowed in Bavaria, is a beautiful Weiss beer. The head on the beer is actually super important. It's a quality sign of the beer and the freshness of ingredients. And as we say in Bavaria, I would say, Prost to a great Europe. Prost. James, what nationality are you? I'm from England. Will you be watching the game here tomorrow morning? Uh, I don't think I'll be watching it here, you know. I want to be singing my national anthem without the Germans, you know. <laughs> Bad for business here. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Just quietly between us, who's going to win tonight? 2-0 England. Ah! <laughs> You've got the savouriness from the pretzel. You've got the sweetness from the mustard. And then you've got the really nice meaty with a little bit of herbs in the in the rice was in there. Perfect. And then you just finish it with a nice Bavarian rice beer. Perfect. And now give it a go. Let me know what you think. So what do you reckon? Tasty. I'm ready for football tonight. All right. Let's hope the Mannschaft is going to win tonight. And sorry, football is not coming home tonight. <laughs> prost, prost. Do you want to swap job? Ah, yeah, why not? 
Yeah, cheers, guys. Best job in the world, Dave Davidovich. We say it every time, but uh, yeah, I fancy a pretzel, maybe schnitzel now. Yeah, yeah I know. He's, he's got the best. Eating all that food, he drinks every single day, and he talks <laughs> football. Unbelievable job. Doing a great job, though, Dave. <laughs> yeah, it's called Solid Commitment. Now it's that time of the night. Where's Ollie? Hey guys, I am feeling a little flat today because of course Scotland were knocked out my team, then my second team Croatia, they got knocked out so now I just need to take a little time to regroup, rethink, pick another team because it's actually that easy for me, I will just pick another side. But I now get to turn my attention to Wembley Stadium, England taking on Germany. This is going to be a cracking game for so many reasons really. So what I'm on the, uh, the way to do now is I'm waiting for a double decker bus to pick me up. Uh, I'm going to go and do my COVID test so I'm allowed into the stadium itself. Uh, I've got a takeaway English breakfast tea in celebration of the three lions. I'm so excited for this one. And I've got to say, it's early doors here, but I bet you it's only about 30 more minutes before we start seeing the pubs starting to be absolutely filled out by fans. Hello, hello to everyone watching on social. I see your comments flying through and some ridiculous ones here. Shabzi says, Mbappe is a poor man's Ogbon Lahore. Bring back the Villa <laughs> legend. That is harsh to say the least. That is ridiculous. Whatever you're drinking, I want some after the show. Sammy Jones says, Paul the Octopus will always be the OG. I think so. Everyone fell in love with Paul the Octopus. And it's good to see heaps of these predictions coming through. Mickey says, 55 years of hurt is long enough. England to win 3-0 tonight. Lily also believes England will win. Fireblaze has come in and upset the crowd. Germany will win 2-1. Havertz to score twice. He's got plenty of experience at Wembley and in London. Harry Kane to score, according to Peter Bull. Come on, England. And Sarab, I was waiting for someone to write this. We almost got halfway through the show. It's coming home in just a lot of capital letters and many, many E's. He thinks that it's going to be 2-1 to England. Lots of People tend to agree with him. Plenty of English fans jumping in. But I tell you what, while I enjoy my Lion Bar, I'm sure the German fans had a different opinion of the game. <laughs> I'm half English, half German, but my dad was English, so I always supported the three Lions. Not really the best tactical decision when you're growing up in Berlin. But considering recent performances, I've got my Germany hat back on. Let's see if other Germany fans share my optimism. How far do you think they can go in the tournament? Um, I'm not quite sure, but I think they uh, are going to go to the semi-finals. Mm -hmm. mm. We can go everything. We, we, go, to, we go to the end. We, we can win this. Uh, so I believe they, uh, they're they really a strong team this year, so uh, they will make it to the finals. I think the half final is possible. Now, I hope to the final leave. The, the final is the first, uh, but I don't think so. And how good is this team compared to the 2014 World Cup winning side? Um, I think not that much experience, but uh, enough experience. So I think it's Yogi's last tournament, so I think we're going to make it and we're going to uh, get the trophy. So I know who I'm backing. After all, football is a simple game. 22 men chase the ball for 90 minutes and at the end, Germany always win. Is football coming home? Nine, 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 according to those German fans, and I don't blame them. Huge game tonight, plenty of history on the line. And just to update you on the poll, 81% of you think that Gareth Southgate should bring back the waistcoat, which made them dream. But Jackson has asked, is the waistcoat a good or bad omen? What's the win-loss ratio? No idea, but Mel might know. See you soon. Welcome back to the warm-up. We are warming up to the final ma final two matches in the round of 16, Claude. Very exciting times indeed. Let's go straight to London, shall we? Because there's a massive occasion about to unfold at Wembley Stadium. Let's go to Andy Mitten. Hello to you, Andy. Great to see you. You've been uh, travelling everywhere, haven't you? Yeah, I've been everywhere. 31 days on the road, 15 games, nine different countries. So it's been very enjoyable and I'm fortunate to do this. But there's a lot of paperwork when you're travelling at the moment and it's quite complicated but the big games are coming thick and fast i was at portugal belgium in seville on sunday and a small matter of england against germany to come 
Yeah, teeny tiny matter. Um, before we get into the nitty gritty of, I guess, the teams, what about, I guess, you talk a lot about fans uh, as part of your day job. We're going to see, I think it's 45,000 at Wembley, the most we've seen in a long time. I'm sure the fans can't wait for that. Yeah, it'll be the biggest crowd in England since COVID started. And I, I write a lot about fan culture. I've traveled the world writing about fan culture, writing about derby matches. And I, I write a lot about fans, whether they're hooligan fans or executive fans. And one thing I noticed at the England games, even though there was only 20,000 inside Wembley, it was still pretty loud when they were singing the national anthem. I'm sure all people in Australia will be delighted to hear that. But I would expect 45,000 in Wembley with almost no German fans because it's so difficult to travel, it will be an incredible atmosphere. Now, how much difference that makes to the players depends on which players you ask. Some players say they're just in the zone, it's just background noise. Others say that the fans really are like the 12th man. And of course, the whole country is behind them as well. It takes very, very little for the English media to get excited about the prospects of the England national team doing well. We've been in this situation many times before when England play against Germany. Unfortunately for the English, it doesn't usually work out too well, but <laughs> there is optimism. There's a lot of good players in this young England team, and this isn't a vintage German team. I watched Germany play in Munich against France a couple of weeks ago, and they were completely outclassed in the first half. And Andy, you mentioned fan culture. We heard just earlier from Gareth Southgate who tried to separate this game from history and said that the players would just be focusing on this, it's another game and all the usual media stuff. But you've, you've heard the fans, you've spoken to the fans. Is this a revenge? Is this a chance for revenge for 1996 and also for 2010? It's England against Germany. It's a rivalry which goes beyond sport, as we all know. And Germany have, have fared better in more recent times. And Gareth Southgate is right to want the fans behind them. It depends how individually the players handle that pressure. Gareth Southgate missed that, that penalty in 96 when Wembley was full predominantly with England fans at the time. Uh, South Africa, there were huge followings of England and Germany fans in South Africa for the 2010 World Cup. The, the biggest I've seen, I was in Brazil for the World Cup in 14, I was in Russia in 18, and the biggest followings were from the South American countries. But in South Africa, England were incredibly well supported and I think they did so badly in that tournament quite a few England fans lost faith I was also at Euro 2016 in Marseille when there was a trouble with the Russian fans and there were like 40,000 England fans there they're incredibly well supported on occasion and it will be very very loud in Wembley tonight even though it will only be half full because the capacity is 90,000 but the whole country is completely up for it, it People like my mother who don't go to any <laughs> actual football games, she said, I've just bought my flags. You know, people really get into the, into the spirit of it. And maybe that's a bad thing because they build themselves up and up and up and then the crash comes when England fail to go through or get knocked out on penalties. I think, that's, oh, I think that's almost part of the ritual that the English are used to. But what about, you talk about the rivalry between England and Germany. Yes, it, it, it goes beyond football, but just talk about the football rivalry because England, it seems to be, instantly oh no not Germany but if you sort of listen to a lot of the German press and the players well former players a lot of them aren't that bothered and they tend to say that teams like the Netherlands are their fierce rivals and and they've they've caused the biggest problems do you subscribe to that I think England Germany is a huge rivalry there was always that do not mention the war and plenty of England fans still mention the war and sometimes it's quite sad when you hear England fans drinking and singing songs about what happened 80 years ago, but on a purely sporting rivalry, it, it's a huge, these are two of the biggest, most important countries in Europe. They've got great histories, not just in sport, and they've got two of the strongest football leagues in the world. I'm a big admirer of German fan culture, the fact that you can stand at games, that admission prices are cheap, that the atmosphere is so good inside German stadiums. I think there's actually a lot of respect between England and Germany fans about each other's countries. And I think the, the sense of humour from both countries is quite similar. That's an Anglo-Saxon idea. And I've got German friends and I, I get on great with them. I love the country of Germany. I love travelling around it. But when it comes to football, there have been these huge matches and Germany have tended to come out on top. Sometimes unfairly, be it by penalties or be it by that Frank Lampard goal, which wasn't in, in South Africa. But when I was speaking to German fans in Munich a few weeks ago, none of them expected to even get to the quarterfinals or the semifinals. This isn't a vintage Germany side. And they talked 
admiringly of all those great young England players. People like Jadon Sancho for Borussia Dortmund, they can't believe he's not playing for England, but he's not. But in theory, there's some very, very good England players, attacking England players. They've not really shown it so far, but England won their group and they're now through to play the third place team from that group of death which Germany were in. Yeah, definitely so much uh, room for thought. Everyone has a different opinion on who's going to start up top. Andy, before I let you go, one thing we love to do with all our guests, thanks to the guys at Tab, I want to ask you for your big call tonight. You can be as outrageous as you want. England against Germany, what is your thought? Outrageous. England to win and win the tournament. Is that more outrageous than saying that Australia are going to join the tournament or Lewis Enrique is going to win a, an award for being the worst dressed manager? England to win the tournament. That's outrage. It's about, about, about the same. See, that, I think the genes are worse. And, well, the Aussies were in Eurovision, so stranger things have happened. But, yeah, love it, Andy. Thanks very much for your time. Enjoy tonight. Good luck to you and yours. I know it's a very nervy time. No, it is for English. English. Yeah, they, they won't be getting any sleep here in Australia tonight, that's for sure. Cracking game. Cracking game. Well, we hope so anyway after mm. this morning. But no, no scoreless draws mm. across any of them. Uh, we've got some news. Um, it's not great for Belgium. Mm. Kevin De Bruyne and Eden Hazard, they are both injured yes. and will miss the next match, the quarter-final. That's a huge blow. They're already so well-travelled, as we talked about. There's fatigue already as a factor, too. Yeah, massive one. The Italian fans will be happy with that. Eden Hazard, maybe not so much, but Kevin De Bruyne, what a difference he makes to that team. He'll be a huge loss. Yeah, it plays right into your hands, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is good news uh, for Italy, but yeah, still going to be an amazing clash. But tonight, first things first, England and Germany, all the build-up from 1.30 a.m. Eastern. That one from Wembley, and then... This well, is a big one. This is a, a big one. We, well, Ukraine. Sweden topped their group as well. They were quite impressive, and Ukraine had a bit of everything, but, you know, these are two sides that play as teams. Yeah, lots of attacking talent on show. You see a few of them there. They've only met once at a major tournament. Ukraine won that, Euro 2012. They won 2-1, and the current manager, Shevchenko, scored both goals, so he'll be there trying to rally the troops for a massive game tonight. Football's romantic, isn't it? Oh. Let's see what, how that one unfolds. And if you miss a minute, you'll get it all uh, covered on the Euro Brecky Wrap with Jules and Shorty. Jules, what's coming up? Thanks, Mel. Yes, we've got another massive show coming up. As always, there will be some very special guests joining me to look at all the day's highlights. Johnny Aloisi brings us his all angles analysis. We get some tips from a celebrity and who will get our Brecky Wraps. We'll also look ahead to the quarterfinals as well. So we'll see you a little bit later. Sounds good. Thanks, you, Jules. Uh, enjoy tonight, everyone, wherever you are, and we're all on the edge of our seats. Don't disappoint us, guys. We want another massive morning of football. Enjoy your football. We're going to have some lion bars, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>